Elden Ring is getting DLC content that is looking pretty incredible, and there's something exciting to walking into more well-made content that expands upon the game's world for a game that you thought you were finished with. Recently, Bandai Namco was reportedly hacked by a ransomware group called Alf V that leaked alleged information about upcoming game releases, sharing it on Twitter. Firstly, we do not support hacking or any illegal acts on this channel, and us fans of this game can eagerly wait and theorize about what's inside of our yet-to-be-open present without having someone coming along to rip the thing open, so looking at this title release sheet, if true, we can see various games pending release from Dragon Ball The Breakers to Little Nightmares 3, followed by Elden Ring's expansion in the third quarter of 2023, an expansion titled Barbarians of the Badlands. The Badlands, as many players may know, exists outside of the Lands Between, a name that may simply mean that the Lands Between exists above the Lands of the Eternal City and below the Lands of the Sky Temple, or possibly even between the other worlds within the Souls franchise that we go over in another video. However, in Elden Ring, our character, as with several others who enter the Lands Between, tread through a heavy fog from the outside, only after being invited in by the Greater Will. So we know that some sort of civilization exists outside of the Lands Between, but from what little we saw in the game's opening, it looks like anyone who is banished from the Lands Between is in for a rough ride, as there doesn't appear to be much of a civilization outside. With everything looking ruined, dead, and with very little sunlight touching down anywhere. Yet looking at the title, Barbarians of the Badlands, it appears that something more is going on outside of the lands between. And the story can only be pointing towards the lands controlled by this guy, Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, aka Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, who was banished from the lands between by Queen Merica, or rather the Greater Will itself once he outlived his usefulness. Upon becoming banished, and therefore a tarnished, he soon became chieftain of the Badlands, Lands, and from what we can tell, the barbarians, who live somewhere outside the lands between. And looking at Godfrey's picture, we can see that he's been through some rough battles as the chieftain, indicating that there may be many more peoples existing outside than just the motionless bodies hoping to be accepted into the lands between once again. And this gives us some insight into what we can expect from the DLC, as rather than simply being a void, the lands outside could be populated with various peoples who simply lack much structure for a decent civilization seeing how everyone that dwells within them was banished for one reason or another. We can expect that these lands outside will be quite brutal and full of warring tribes for us to encounter, and possibly even lead, bring together, or simply conquer. And these badlands are miserable enough that despite being the chieftain of them, Godfrey didn't waste any time in leaving them as soon as he could. Near the main game's end, we end up meeting Godfrey below the Erd Tree, who says that he has returned once more to be granted an audience with Queen Merrick and fights us before we can go on to battle her and the final boss. Despite Godfrey's reappearance, it seems that the lands between are relatively safe from anyone existing on the outside who would dare to attack them, either because there's no way to enter them without being invited in, or rather because anyone who's tarnished is sent far enough away as to render them harmless as a threat, and it could just be that difficult to find your way back into the lands between from the outside. And so difficult that even our player, upon being invited into the lands between, and receiving the Greater Will's grace, stands up revitalized as a light shines in front of them that vaguely looks like a door opening before them, sending them from laying in the middle of a dark wasteland to suddenly standing in an abandoned building within the Lands Between. But still though, it may not be entirely impossible for another force to invade the Lands Between. It's said that the Newman race, whom Queen Merica belongs to, came from outside the Lands Between, with them or possibly others entering the land via the sea. It's possible that one scenario for the DLC could see us venturing back outside the Lands Between into the unruly Badlands due to an increasing threat from the Barbarians, who much like their former chieftain, seek to re-enter the Lands and wreak havoc upon all those still dwelling within them who they feel wronged by. And depending upon this DLC taking place after the game with its six different endings, the greater will that once stopped much of anyone from entering the Lands Between could be gone. But either way, I think it doesn't matter what ending we choose, as the barbarians are simply looking to attack whoever still dwells inside, and in response to this rising threat we venture back outside to meet them. The other scenario is that this DLC could take place before the events of Elden Ring, back when Godfrey was still chief and the Greater Will hadn't yet begun inviting the Tarnished back in, and we will simply get to explore what went on outside before. But there is one other scenario that could happen, that the events of the DLC take place during 
during the events of Elden Ring, and most likely already playing as our current character, rather than someone else existing outside, we're able to venture back outside to fulfill some unknown purpose. Whether it be for power, or, who am I kidding, it's most likely for power, and sweet items. However, any upcoming DLC to be released for a game this massive in both its size and popularity could see much more happening with it. One theory that seems to be much more likely in the minds of many players is that the DLC will expand upon Elden Ring's player versus player gameplay. Previously, a From Software streamer and modder named Lance McDonald discovered several unused arenas located all over Elden Ring's map, specifically in the areas of Kaled, Northern Limgrave, and the capital of Landell. Upon walking up to the doors of these round-shaped buildings, none of them are able to be accessed, leaving their existence questionable. But after modding the game to let him clip through walls, Lance walks into a long-looking hallway, with him noting that the areas have a full interior design, as well as functional collisions, which might show that they were meant to be accessible to players at one time or another. Upon walking around some more, Lance finds various objects including weapons sticking in the ground, and upon walking into the end of the hallways, Lance finds himself standing in the middle of a coliseum-like arena that clearly looks like it's meant for some battles to take place, complete with seating, weapons being scattered around, and opposing gates on opposite sides of the arena for contestants to walk out of. Upon examining the other barred-off round building existing on the map, like the one in Northern Limgrave, Lance's game is invaded by an arena duelist named Recusant Henricus and finds a duelist furled finger lying in front of the door. Upon entering the building, Lance finds himself in yet another dueling coliseum, and upon clipping to the third building in Kaled, finds himself in another differently designed hallway to a building that contains a third uniquely designed coliseum. And it makes sense that From Software would release additional player versus player content with their DLC release. Seeing the enduring popularity of Elden Ring's PvP and co-op multiplayer mode, having a PvP DLC would offer all players additional content regardless of where they are in the story or what ending they've chosen, while giving them a continued incentive to test a variety of character builds and fighting styles. But it also makes sense that if From Software is releasing DLC content in the third quarter of 2023, aka the summer of 2023 being sometime between July and September, that they would release more than just the arena content by itself. With what do you know, another leak pointing at the fact that we could see content specifically around Millennia's brother, Mikola, after an Elden Ring modder and YouTuber named Garden of the Eyes data mine cut dialogue from the game's NPCs, as well as an unused ID from Mikola himself, giving space for an actual character for us to interact with in the game's future. Which fans may know is interesting seeing how Mikola is canonically dead in the base game, with Monk's chamber hiding Mikola in a membranous egg during a cutscene. As one of the few named demigods within the game who does not have a boss battle or much of an encounter personally, there's plenty of room for From Software to expand upon this character's story and offer new content and lore to explore in the game. And now with so many leaks and theories popping up surrounding the game, From Software's first DLC will undoubtedly bolster Elden Ring's standing as its most widely played game. However, for players who want a firm timeline of when to expect any DLC content to appear, we can figure out a fairly accurate release date by looking at the pattern of previously released DLC content from FromSoft, which also gives us a clue as to how much DLC content we can expect. Which, just as I wish for a new heap of content when seeing anything new to add to one of my favorite games, fans should expect a decent update that won't disappoint. In the past, FromSoft has shown a fairly solid pattern of releasing its new DLC content around 7 to 8 months after the release of its base game, with the amount of content being released almost always being a large chunk of a new part of the world to explore, that expands upon its gameplay and lore behind what's happening, that can keep players busy for hours as they take on new enemies and boss fights. Although there's one problem, this is Elden Ring, from software's biggest, most ambitious game yet, that reinvented its formula and took it to an open world format. Whatever DLC they have planned out could easily be expected to take months longer than most likely every previous DLC they've released until now. As they tire away fleshing out whatever free roaming spaces, character story, and boss fights they create. Not to mention, they have the added pressure of making sure that this DLC really hits the spot for not only longtime fans of the franchise, but also pleases the much larger fan base that they've acquired. Which makes sense that they would plan releasing their content in the third quarter of next year, nearly a full year 
and a half after the base game's release at minimum. And this showcases a problem for most large game developers, as video games like the Soul series, Zelda, and others keep increasing the scale of everything within their content to keep up with gamers' expectations in a competitive market of video game companies trying to constantly one-up another with the next new hit. Not only does the DLC content they release have to get bigger and better in its scale and overall performance, but the games themselves could begin taking much longer for companies to create in general as they try to keep up with consumers' increasing expectations. Elden Ring, much like Zelda, which set a whole new expectation from consumers when it comes to the series and open world games itself, is taking far longer to make any follow-up games in the series, with games like Breath of the Wild 2 being delayed over and over again just because Nintendo wants to make sure they don't miss the mark when they finally release it, whenever that happens. And the same thing could easily happen to any later games in From Software series, as they try to fill in the large gap with various DLC content to tie players over. But if none of this was very exciting, then I saved my most interesting fact for last. Activision, in connection with Blizzard, has recently begun sponsoring content creators to create videos specifically about Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, a game that was released way back in 2019, which would be a rather strange marketing move for a company to make, as they dump money into various content creators unless they were planning on Elden Ring's follow-up to be Sekiro 2. Watch this video if you're interested in seeing how all of the Souls games are connected.